Hello and welcome to our Bot AI Episode 2. In Episode 1, we went through the process of setting up our AI along with the EQS generation. The EQS generation you can see here is a load of points around the map that we've uh, dictated ourselves. Now, I want to set up a way to filter and score these points so that we know which one to go towards. So for that, we're going to go into our EQS query. And here's the generation. And if you right click on this, you can go to add test and add a variety of tests. Now we're going to first of all add a distance test saying, I don't want you to pick one that is closer to it. So we're going to go to the distance test and go to the test top, uh, option up top. And you see it's got test purpose, filter and score. That means it will uh, filter some of them out and then score the rest. So what I want to do here is I just want it to filter out. So I'm going to go to just change that to filter only. And at the moment, then you've got test mode set to des distance in three dimensions. I'm going to change that to distance in two dimensions. So we only worry about the X and Y plane. We're not worried about the height necessarily. And the distance to is the query. So that's what we want. How far away is this point to the thing that's looking for it? So we'll do that. Then you've got the options for filter. Now filter refers to what is going to actually be filtered out. And the values here is measured by distance. So we've got a range, minimum or maximum. And I'm going to do a minimum value. And I'm going to filter out a minimum value here. So if I go to this uh, value minimum and type in say 2000 and go click save and see what effect that has on here, you can see that the blue ones here have been filtered out and the red ones have not. Okay, because they're over 2,000 units away. So they need a minimum of 2,000 units away in order to be valid points. So to make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to go over to where it says minimum and where you see the float value minimum. Click on a little arrow next to it and you can change the data binding. And the data binding, we can choose a random number. I'm going to choose that, expand open, and I can put in a minimum and maximum. So I want to put in a minimum of, uh, let's say, 1,000 and a maximum of, say, uh, 3,000. So now it's going to choose a random distance each time it runs this test uh, between those numbers and return a random point from that list. So hit save and you'll see that in action here. Okay, there's our filter going on there. And you can see if I move them about, you can see the randomization is kicking in each time it runs the test. Okay. So alongside that, I also want to score it because these are all scored zero, which is not very useful. We want to pick a point that it wants to run towards. So if I were to just uh, plug this into the enemy character, first of all, so let's go into our, no, let's start again. So now we're filtering out these points, we want to say, get one of these points and put them into the move to instruction on our AI. So I'm gonna to go to the behavior tree and we're gonna to go to the root here and do a selector node. Selector nodes allow you to choose which path to go down based on whether or not it fails or not. Uh, more information about behavior trees and all of AI uh, terminology and components, head over to my AI series on my channel. You can learn more about that there. Then from the selector, we're going to drag out and do a sequence. And the first item in the sequence, we're going to drag out and do a EQS test. So run EQS query. And on the right hand side, you want to scroll down. You don't want to use the top one because as you can see, it's deprecated. You don't want to use that. So scroll down and you'll see EQS section. Expand that open and now you can choose your EQS query. And the resulting blackboard key needs a blackboard location. At the moment, it's just doing self actor because that's the only one that's there. So I'm going to go to blackboard, go new key, and choose vector. And we call it one target location. Hit save and go back to behavior tree. I'm going to change the resulting blackboard key to target location so that it sends whatever it gets as the random point to that key. I'm then going to go and tell it to move to that target location. And I'm also going to turn its acceptable radius up by 500. Actually, no, let's do it up to uh, 200. 
So what I want to do now is I want it so the AI will run towards the point that is in a similar sort of direction that he's currently running in. This gives a more natural movement of him running around in circles around the whole entire map rather than ping-ponging back and forth like you just saw. So we're going to go into the query and we're going to add a dot test. And a dot test looks at rotations and scores them based on that. So the test purpose of this is just going to be score only. And we'll look at line A here, don't look at line B. In line A, we're going to look at the mode for rotation, which is correct. And the rotation we're going to use is the query as rotation. So we're going to do that, and I think the rest of it we can leave alone. I think that would be okay. We can hit save, and look at our query test pawn here. So the ones that are more in the same sort of direction as the enemy, or as the uh, testing pawn here, are going to be scored higher than the ones that aren't. So those who are facing the same direction are more accurate. If I turn this chap round, you can see that these ones are now scored higher. So it goes based on which way he's facing. The ones are more in front of him, he will score those higher. So with that in mind, if I push play now, we should see that our character run around the environment in a more circular fashion. Find him, there he is. It goes around here. Let's just follow him for a bit. <coughs> here it goes. And he just, it will just go around in a circle, basically. It's kind of like what you do in Call of Duty. You just run around in a circle, basically. Uh, yep. But as he turns, he's going to look for the next one that's closest to his sort of rotation. And you can add more of these points in if you want to add more points in. So let's say, let's put one on the bridge here. So point of interest, pop that there. Open it up and close that. We should see that point. Save maybe. Go. That point's now got some points there too. Um, you just keep adding more points in if you want to flesh out the level a bit more. It all depends on your, what level design you have. Uh, there he goes. Okay. And there's a few other things you could do to tweak it to make it a bit more natural looking as well. For example, we can go into its uh, move two here and change the acceptable radius up to like 500. And we'll hit uh, save. Maybe we'll allow strafe as well, maybe that might be useful. Save and go into there. Let's see the difference that makes. Off it goes. You should see him more like less like um like it looks like he's running to a point rather uh, instead of actually looking around like a natural run around. So another thing that could be useful here is you can use clamping on your dot here to make it so it doesn't always pick one particular direction. It won't favour the one that's directly in front of it. Instead, you may want to make it favour a clamp on it. So. To show you how that works, if we go to the dot here and go to the score, it says clamping. You've got clamp min and clamp max. If I go to clamp max and choose specified value and put in the value of 0 0.5, that means anything that is sort of halfway around the uh, orientation of the character here. So this is the orientation here, halfway is about there, and it will then score everything else above that as one, everything else below that as less than uh, uh, less than one. And uh, like so. So now when he does it, he's got more of a random choice between the one you get selected here. Um, which you may see some benefit out of. It requires a lot just a lot of testing to figure out what works best for your level. And to add even more randomness to it, you can go into the behavior tree and look at the run EQS query. 
go over to the right hand side details panel and you can change the query config and run mode here so the run mode here we can go to single best item and change it to a single random item from best five percent best item from 25 percent or all matching based on conditions you set up let's say the best five percent then it will randomly choose one of those points that is within the top five percent and you again you get a bit more randomness in it which is a bit better there it goes And off he goes doing his thing um and it makes it you can do tweak all these things as well to get me exactly how you like them there's so much you can do to eqs and so much you can do to environmental stuff i will be having a series out if it's not really out by the time you watch this about eqs and covering all the various options available in it so if you want to learn more about eqs you can check that out on my channel as well um yeah here you go so that's him running around but what about reacting to the player so in the next episode, we'll get him reacting to the player's presence and when he sees you, starts chasing you instead of doing his running around stuff. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can watch that part plus many other videos well before anyone else from just $1 a month. If you want access to the start project files that you see here, head over there and become a gold patron where you can get these project files plus every other project file that I've made for various series all available for you there. Thanks again for watching, make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.